everyone. Welcome back to Lost Together Forever, More Sealed Diaries. First off, I'd like to thank you all for liking, subscribing, and watching all of our videos. And uh, it really means a lot to us. And uh, it's great to see your uh, your input and any comments you guys want to uh, make towards us. Now, uh, in today's episode, what I want to do is a little attention to the front end of the bike here. So I'm going to remove these uh, reflectors. I'm going to install some fork gaiters and also some uh, adjustable caps to the top of the forks. Um, you know, the gaiters are just your standard uh, Royal Enfield fork gaiters. So we put in those on. Also, these adjusters that I bought, these preload adjusters, uh, as you can see here, they'll go onto the fork, the top of the caps here and allow for some preload adjustment. These are very similar to the ones that are sold by Hitchcocks, um, except I picked these ones up on eBay. If you, uh, there'll be a link in the description down below. Basically, they're a 41 millimeter uh, fork cap. Uh, and they say that they're for a Yamaha R1, but they fit great on these bikes. So first off, you can see on uh, my bike, I have a uh, steering stem lift, front end lift. So that's on there right now. The front wheel is off the ground. Uh, the bike is stable. I've got it on the back. Now, if you don't have a, a lift like this, what you can do is uh, jack up the, uh, put a floor jack of some sort underneath the case, lift the front up that way, and then I would suggest also to uh, to secure it to a rafter or something just to ensure that it's safe and the bike doesn't drop at all. Because you are going to be after removing the front wheel to do the gaiters. So it's a bit of a process, but uh, safety first, make sure that your bike is secure and the front wheels lifted up, however you choose to do it, whether you, if you've got a, a lift like this, or if you want to jack the front end up, um, that's the way to do it. So first off, we're going to remove these uh, reflectors. Simple trick to do that, to remove the reflectors, is with dental floss. Just have to take the floss, stick it in behind the reflector, That's off there. Now, the glue for the rubber sticky stuff should be able to remove. Steady pull. Now any residue that's left over, see there is some here on the other side as well. I'm just going to use a bit of WD-40 on a paper towel, clean it right off. Okay. All right. Next step, um, in order to get the front wheel off, we're going to take the front axle bolt off and the brake caliper. It's a 24 millimeter bolt on the front and a 13 for the caliper. So five millimeter on the ABS wire. The sensor, all right. So I'm just gonna use a zap strap here to just secure the brake so it doesn't interfere with what we're doing. Now, next, we have the uh, top. Again, another 5 millimeter. There's the front fender. Now, I was considering removing this fender extension, but it does a, a very useful practical job and that it does protect the engine here from any. Uh, crud that flies up or uh, rocks and stuff and with the pipes I'd, I'd rather have the pipes protected by this fender than pull the extension off. I know some people remove it but I've chosen to leave it on and uh, yeah, I, th 
think it uh, is a very functional um, piece of kit. This side it's a 10 millimeter bolt that holds the speedo cable. Six millimeter. With that front pinch bolt loose enough, you should be able to get the front wheel right off. There we go. I'm just pushing it through from the other side. Support the wheel a bit, and out comes the axle. And the speedo sensor. Just lower that off. Now what we're going to do, uh, prior to dropping the forks out, um, is I want to just loosen off the front caps because I am replacing them with the adjusters. If you're not, uh, if you're just putting on your boots, then you don't have to uh, do this. But if you are putting on the adjusters, it's easiest to just loosen them off a bit while they're still clamped in the triple tree. So, yeah. Now the other thing you want to do before you drop the forks is measure your distance here just how far they're sitting above the uh, the triple top triple cap. So take note of that distance so that you can reset it there when you reinstall the forks. All right. Next step, we're going to have to move the remove the uh, headlight. It's a 12 mil. All right. So we've got the headlight uh, dropped down. Now we'll do the uh, the pinch bolts on the lower triple, the upper triple, and the handlebar, and then rotate the um, top fork tube to the side, and that'll allow us to loosen off the headlight clamp. And as you can see, the fork will begin to drop out. You can rotate it over in order to get access to that. Turns out this is a five millimeter pinch bolt. So our fork should slip down like so. The top uh, handlebar is held on by a some sort of a linkage. And just wiggle them down. And out drops the left hand side fork. All right, so I've got the uh, the fork uh, stanchion and everything cleaned up. Got the boot ready to go on. Uh, tip that I just learned: uh, if you put the metal clamp on the boot uh, before, which it's before you slide it on, makes it a lot easier. Less uh, messing around. So, slide that on like so. Get it done. You're not going to clamp this totally yet until you get the forks uh, reinstalled and you find out how much travel or how much room you actually need with the boot. So, get this side like this. So, it's all basically all ready to go back in together. Side. Everything is still aligned up because the fork on the right side is all still fixed. Nothing is loose. So that gives us a bit of ability to know that things are square and set up without having to As I said, I'll give the torques and the torque values in the description afterwards. Right now I'm just snugging things up so I can sort of get an idea of how they need to be mounted and secured. Okay, so I've, uh, I've tightened up the headlight uh, uh, bracket when I had to just move it out this way, so I've done that. So now I've got to Loosen it again and then rotate it in like so. But having just doing one side at a time allows you to use 
the other side as a reference. All right, so we got that one side, the left side done. Um, had the headlight uh, tightened up, headlight bracket tightened up, sort of matching it with the other side. A little, a little dry run to make sure that the headlight bucket still fits in there perfectly, which it does. So now we'll move on to the uh, right hand side. Same process that we used for the other side. on our fork stanchions to make sure they're up here. Sorry, fork tubes to make sure they're at the proper height. So that's there. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I have this guy snugged up just a bit to hold it. And it's at the, the right height, I've measured on each side to make sure they're equal. Now I'm just going to go up and position the headlight bracket where it should be. And try and give that a bit of a tightening right now. And then we'll, um, okay, so I've got the headlight clamp uh, clamp there. It's measured it so it's the proper height. Now what we're going to do is just loosen this guy off a bit. Forks in. Um, I'm going to now tighten the. Check the headlight. Make sure it fits. And it does. So to uh, be very careful with these bolts. They seem like they're a bit soft. So I've noticed that the uh, the Allen head socket seems to really yeah the Allen head socket seems to really sort of chew it up a bit okay. all right one thing I did notice is there's a huge amount of grease on the inside of the uh, the fork tube. Uh, I've, I've heard about this with some of the Enfields that maybe somebody in India was a little overzealous in their application of grease at the factory so I'm just gonna make sure that that's cleaned off. I'm not gonna cause any issues. Speedo drive also has a notch here that fits into a protrusion on the inside of the uh, the fork tube. So uh, when you're installing it, make sure that you get that, those two lined up together. All right. So we've got the speedo drive in. Make sure that the spacer on the left hand side is there and, and just lift the wheel up. Like so.
the front reel bolt here uh, is torqued to 70 newton meters or 52 foot pounds. So we'll do that. The front pinch bolt is uh, 25 newton meters or 18 foot pounds. That's located down over here on this side. So firstly, I'll uh, snug the uh, the bolt, sorry, the, the nut, and the spindle. There we go. 52. Put the brake cover back on. Um, make sure that you don't uh, move the pads. Slip the pads over top of the caliper, sorry, the uh, rotor. seven pounds there, which I believe is about 10 newton meters. Okay, so we've got this far, got the fender on, torque the fender back down. Now I'm just going to position these boots so that they're at an equal height. Make sure they're all lodged in there. I can have the clamps to the back. A uh, three millimeter Allen and a uh, seven millimeter wrench. Alright, now we'll get to the caps. Now these are, as far as I can tell, uh, the exact same caps that are, are sold by Hitchcocks online. Now, I picked these up on eBay, like I say, I'll put a link in the, uh, in the description below. Um, one of the things that was pointed out on uh, one of the forms that I go to is that this bottom Allen screw here that holds the uh, bottom of the plunger uh, you should really do a little bit of Loctite on there. I don't have any red Loctite. If I had red, I'd use red, but uh, all I've got is blue, so put some blue Loctite on there before you put them together. The last thing you'd like is, of course, is one of these Allen heads vibrating off and falling into the bottom of your fork workings. The other thing that I would recommend and I'll show you here um, as well before you install these or use a wrench to on them um, wrap the uh, the tops of them and some electrical tape or something to protect them. The anodizing is not very durable, so... Make sure that that's all good. So we have two of them ready to go in. Let's get the old ones off. Twenty-two millimeter wrench will get the old ones off. So that's what we have is a spacer. Okay, so I've gotten the uh, the stock caps off and these are the uh, adjustable caps that I'm putting on. Now in noticing I've been trying to put these back on and with the spacers that are in the fork tubes I just can't force get enough pressure in to force these down so what I'm gonna have to do is trim about two centimeters of uh, metal off of these uh, spacers that are in the tubes so just going to fire up the Dremel, 
and take two centimeters off each one and then come back and install them hopefully without any more issues. So taking two centimeters off each one of these. Top is equivalent to a 12 millimeter. So to adjust any preload, uh, it is a 12 millimeter. So these are both backed off totally now. So to adjust for preload, like I said before, a bit of tape is probably good. Just going to go down to the first line on here and just see how that is. Take it for a ride and uh, see if it's firmed up the front end a bit. Like I say it's not going to be state of the art uh, adjustable front forks, but it does give a little more adjustability to your front end, allowing a little more uh, preload on there, and it kind of looks uh, a little more custom as well, kind of looks kind of cool, so yeah, there you have it. Okay, so recap, we got the reflectors removed off the sides of the forks, we've got the boots on, and got these adjusters on. So now we've got a bit of preload adjustment. Once again, I think it looks. Uh, I think it looks really, really cool. Thanks again for watching. Lost together forever. More secondaries. If you can, uh, give us a big thumbs up and uh, subscribe and stay tuned for more videos. Got another vid another video in the works for uh, exhaust system. So that'll probably be our next one. And uh, oh, in regards to my last video, some people suggest that I uh, maybe want to remove this back hoop. Uh, which you can with uh, two bolts, or four, sorry, two bolts on each side. But I kind of like having the uh, the handle there in terms of putting it up on the stand or uh, moving the bike around the garage. So I'm going to leave this on, but uh, yeah, that's my preference. Now, like I say, uh, stay tuned. We've got another video coming up uh, for uh, exhaust. And uh, yeah, thanks again for watching. Lost together forever.